struggling mightily. And Stanaway has hit the pits. That, the car was just in front of Katzberg. So if these guys run out, Stanaway ran out. He stopped on the same yeah, lap as the back is Audi. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. I just, <laughs> again, you saw the number four of Gavin just float up a little bit. And for a moment, Garcia looked to go underneath. A little wiggle that time from the back of the number four. Does Garcia now have enough to do something down into the hairpin? You know that Gavin is going to protect. Boy, Antonio had a great run. There's nowhere, nothing he can do. Well, for Rene Rast, he's had success here, but he did lose a real heartbreaker here on fuel strategy. I think it was three or four years ago. And so he's been in this position before in the GTD battle. We're looking on the left side of the screen. Look at Garcia. Boy, he's trying to just get enough along the outside to he's be able to close to the point where Gavin's going to have to give him room. I think that's his entire plan, wasn't it, to get up there yeah. and uh, have he Gavin got a good run. shallow that exit up. Here we go. This time, you're yeah. right, Brian Garcia, much closer on the run out. Oh, he's got to go low. He's got to go low. He's got to stay left. Yeah. yeah. And that's going to shallow up the run into the bus stop. Gavin protects. Ooh, Garcia now pops to the outside, but Gavin's oh, got that. Man. It's so hard to hit your marks when you're approaching these corners from the other side of the road. It's so easy to get it wrong. You lose all your reference points. Yep. Car breaks a little bit differently if you're going on diagonal, a little bit different weights. I mean, he's he's pushing the limits of being reactive, but I think uh, Bo Barfield's going to let Doug Feehan handle yeah. that. <laughs> he says, I don't need to officiate this one. has been told to coast as much as he can as well. Look at this. Garcia now on the outside. Oh, and that run of Austin is taking down. Can he stop it? Can he stop it? No, oh, no. Oh, he's going to get inside. He's going to get him. Gavin gets back. back. Through. Awesome stuff. Fantastic. Wow. Oh, e for effort. <laughs> now, what can Garcia do with the 90? And can he follow him through, as you guys said? Because right behind him, let 90 be the fullback. I'll tell you what. Gavin knows uh, how that one worked out the last time. I'm sure he's looking at Yeah, if there was any doubt as to how serious Antonio Garcia was going to be, there's no doubt anymore. But white flag for our overall leader next time by. The question mark is, is he going to get in front of these two Corvettes before he takes the checkered flag? Otherwise, they're going to have to do another lap, which would be great for us, not for Friday, Gavin. <laughs> Is he any slow? No. Now, is it? Is yes. Ray Rask? Yes, he's slow as well. So this could fall into the Katzberg seat. Sorry, I had to borrow it from you there, Tommy. Twice, he, the Rene uh, Rask, yeah. a lap for oh. victory. Oh. And suddenly, Garcia, he's the one that got hung up. Brian behind that number 90 Corvette, yeah. DP. That cost him a little bit here. Cost him a ton. Just going down towards the bus stop chicane. I'm not sure. There he is. He's not going to get him now. There's Pippo. So I think these uh, Corvettes going to have to do two more laps. Good for us, as you said. No question about it. But as Pippo Durrani in the number two Tequila Patron ESN Lige Honda comes up under the banking, where you're anticipating seeing the white flag fly. One lap to go in the 2016. Rolex 24 at Daytona. 20 seconds to the good. This team and this young man, what an amazing star. I think we are seeing in the early part of a rocketing career as he feeds it down into the chicane and working his way now through the infield. Fabulous stuff. And again, that means we're going to see the rest of that lap and another one for the Corvettes and Rast. Yeah, he is just crawling right now. Katzberg has already picked up second. So he is not over yet for the 44. He's still in the lead. He's slow yeah. way down. It's eight seconds at the line, but he's gone slow since. They're trying to manage this. I think the bad news is uh, he's going to have to do another lap and a half. It's a long haul. Yeah. Play. It's a long haul, no question about it. Meanwhile, Durrani, I think Patron, Tequila Patron, ESM has found a star. You think so? Uh, I think absolutely. <laughs> and the interesting thing, we 
we've been talking about the history here. Obviously, Scott Pruitt not going to be able to break that tie with Hurley Haywood as we now go back to these two Corvettes. But we might see the first win overall by a Honda here as the Corvettes come by down the front straight. That in itself would certainly be some history. And maybe, Brian, a changing of the guard just a little bit. This is the last year of the DP. Everybody, of course, some hoping they get this win one more time. But it's this type of car that will be the future, starting with the new DPI format. Absolutely. As we move to 2017, yep. there'll be a new car. It was the last chance, as you said, for a Daytona prototype to take the victory. Looks like that will not happen. The plot is thickened even more in GTD oh, because oh. the Viper, driven by Damian Faulkner, is, is battling. Here's Checker. Here's the Checker. Honda wins overall at Daytona for the first time. And Scott Sharp and his Tequila Patron ESM team, Ed Brown, Johannes Van Overbeck, and Hippo Durrani, folks, remember that name. You're going to be hearing a lot about him. The Corvettes heading into the kink right now as we watch Rost trying, trying to milk it to bring it home here in front of Nick Katzberg. No from behind, bud. But it is the Corvettes as well now into the West Horseshoe as they are working their way toward turn six. That's Katzberg's pulled away from Faulkner. Yep. Here's the number 93. That, of course, is the car that ended up winning here last year and went on to win the Tequila Patron North American Endurance Cup. They're in a good position as well. There is the 44 trying to make his way now out of that bus stop. And if he can hang on, it's possible they might, might have done this here. He had a 6.6 second margin at the line. Boy, he is just absolutely easy. The 85 has won in prototype challenge, by the way. JDC Miller Motorsports. An incredible job. And in GT Daytona, Magnus brings it home in the Audi winning here at the Rolex 24. Daytona. And out of the banking. Here we go. This is GT Le Mans at its finest. These two Corvettes side by side at the line. It is Gavin and Corvette number four winning at Daytona by what? Three, four feet over the team car of Antonio Garcia. 34 one thousandths of a second as Corvette goes one two here at Daytona. Look at that margin of victory. You, phenomenal. You may expect that in the Daytona 500, exactly. but after 24 hours, picked, yeah. and you saw Dan Binks there with a smile on his face, not because he finished second, but because they raced all the way to the checkered flag. That was fantastic. fantastic. The buzz was about the four GT and where the GM could beat them. What a statement, a one-two finish side by side across the line. And there's Max Angelelli, door open on that car, and I'm I wonder if that's if he's related. Yeah. yeah. I, I, when they put him in, I said they put a fresh canary in the coal mine, and you know Max was not going to quit. Yeah, unbelievable here. By the way, Bamber, the Porsche third, Alessandro Pierghiti brings the Ferrari home in fourth, and the 25 BMW with its debut finishes fifth in the hands of Augusto Parthas. But there are your four class winners, and we're going to come back for the celebrations here at the Rolex 24 Daytona.